get started with today's video. I wanted to take a quick look at something that I noticed with my headlights last night. It's a common issue with retrofit headlights. Uh, not even just the cheapo projectors like these are, but the actual retrofit source projectors and even some of the higher end ones. But they tend to get stuck in the high beam. Uh, and that appears to happen to mine, um, which is a little annoying. It's a very simple fix, but it's just time consuming because if we were to go about it, we would take them out. So we'd have to redo pretty much everything we already did minus the wiring, which wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, but it is still kind of bothering me. But uh, I'm curious if it was a humidity issue because it rained yesterday. Uh, and it was very, 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 very humid outside. It was like 97% humidity when I went to bed last night. Um, and I want to check this bulb because this bulb was very dim last night. This one was locked in high beam. That one was very dim. So I'm going to check things real quick. And if it's still dim, I'm going to pop the hood and see if maybe uh, one of the bulbs were like maybe backed out of the projector, which is a good possibility since we're going to modify them to fit. So this one's on and it's working. It's actually not even like bright. I'm curious if it's even stuck on high. This one is horrifically dim. You guys can like barely see it. They are quite dirty. So I'm gonna pop the hood and see if that bulb backed out because there's a good chance it being a cheapo Amazon headlight bulb. Um, because I didn't buy like Op 7 or anything like that. I just got like a $30 setup on, on, on Amazon. Uh, there's a good chance that the bulbs are uh, probably going out already. As you can see, it's not backing out. It's perfectly sitting as it should be in there. The harness looks like it's connected completely down there. I don't know what's going on. That is definitely odd, that's for sure. I'm curious if it's like a polarity issue or something. This one, same story. Everything looks just fine in here. See, I don't know what's going on with that bulb. That bulb's probably dead already, which would be quite an annoyance because uh, we just put these in the truck. Um, but I'm also going to look really quick and deal with the high beam thing, see if it's still sticking. Because, uh, I mean, good chance it is. So, uh, yeah, it's still sticking. So, like I said, it's a common issue with retrofit lights to have a high beam stick. Uh, it's just quite annoying. So, yeah, this doesn't even look like it's on now. Like, literally, you get, like, the slightest glimmer of light. So, that bulb's probably dead. And you bonk that and it goes back down. So, I don't know what's up with that. It's definitely annoying, but I don't know. Part is life. Such is life. So, let's uh, get on with the actual topic of today's video. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Everyone's having a great day today. So, today's video is going to be kind of an interesting topic uh, for those who have watched a long time on the channel. Um, so, all that minor annoyances aside with the headlights um hope you all have been having a great day today uh i've had an all right day uh this is still mildly frustrating i noticed it last night so um like i said looks like an easy fix we just have to disassemble the one headlight and then swap the bulb out in the other and we're good to go um this is just you know this is you know it's custom you know everything you know when you build something custom not everything is going to work for a try i mean a lot of people know that i mean uh, the radio had issues when we first hooked it up. Um, I mean, it's not to say my dad's like bad at wiring. My dad's wired thousands and thousands of projects. Things just don't, just sometimes have bugs and they need to be worked out. And this is one of those things. Uh, I guess it doesn't really help that this was our first attempt at this. So obviously this, we're, we're learning as we go, which is why I'm not like horribly like pissed off or anything about this. I'm, you know, irritated, but I'm not throwing stuff and you know, getting angry about it. It's just a mild annoyance. I know how to fix it. I just have to do it. Um, so yeah, all that put aside, let's get into today's actual topic, which we're gonna talk about the past of the channel, what, what, what I did before cars. If you guys have been watching for that insane amount of time, you know, hats off to you uh, for watching that long. Uh, and the idea of this came because uh, there's someone found my Xbox gamer tag from the how to make an Xbox Live on video, uh, profile on PC video that I did years ago. And that's still, ironically, my most viewed video, even though I really hate that video so much. Um, one, because of the spamming aspect. I get spammed with messages and friend requests and you know invites to voice chats and games all the time now. And it drives me nuts a little bit, not gonna lie, but you know it's what I get for putting my Xbox gamer talk out there. It's been the number one motivation behind cha possibly changing it eventually. 
But uh, one thing to, well, let's get off of that because I could go on all day about that video and how much I hate it um, for other circumstances. But uh, pretty much before I did car stuff, before I had the truck behind me, and even for the first few months after I had the truck, uh, I was primarily a gaming YouTuber. This channel used to be a gaming channel through a couple of different name changes. So it was originally called Jadabs and One, as all you guys know, which was saying from my first initial and my last name, and number one, which was my at the t which was at the time my PlayStation uh, username because uh, we gamed primarily on PlayStations back in the day. Um, this was pre, you know, my console collecting stuff, which you guys have seen RT2. You guys know I collect on the side. Uh, it's one of the only other hobbies that take. It's one of the only hobbies that takes away from my car stuff is my retro collecting and my PC stuff. Um, so yeah, if you like that kind of stuff, go check out our two where you can get, you know, modern stuff that you would expect to see on, like, you know, several years back in that old channel. Uh, the channel I went through a phase was called Gearhead Gamer, and that was around the time I had the truck, and I was trying to mix the two, and I got bullied a lot for the job on one name, which is the primary reason I changed it. Uh, a lot of people would think I'm a wuss for that, and, you know, to each their own on that one. Um, I really don't care. I didn't really like the channel name that much to begin with, so it was kind of my um, deciding factor in changing it. This was just getting picked on for the name, and me already liking the name, so I went ahead and changed it. Uh, pretty much everything else stayed to have someone until uh, PlayStation allowed you to switch out usernames. Uh, my Steam was also GF1 for the longest time. You know, once I got everything switched, everything was fine and dandy. Uh, PlayStation was like recent because I just uh, like enacted that. Um, but anyway, I did primarily gaming videos on the channel. I started off with Pokemon. I did Pokemon for quite a long time. Um, it's, it, you guys should already know this, but now that's one of my favorite game series. So I did lots of videos on it. Um, I branched out into car games like The Crew, Gran Turismo, and later on Forza, which I still play all three of those. Well, not necessarily The Crew. Um, I kind of lost interest in that game after a while. But Forza and Gran Turismo in particular, I did tons of videos on back in the day. Uh, even in the early days of the channel being called Rose Tires, I did lots of videos on Forza. Uh, because the channel was primarily intended at the time to be cars on the side, gaming stuff first. I did, I, I filmed a lot of gaming content. I loved doing it. Um, and people have asked me for years why I stopped. I mean, there have been, there have been tons of subscribers who watched this channel back then that have you know, commented on recent stuff or messaged me or, you know, commented on live streams of uh, why I stopped doing gaming content on this channel. And it's a quite an easy answer and it's all about YouTube. YouTube uh, is a really odd place and it's really hard to find your niche. And at the time that I was doing both, uh, when I, after I had the truck that has kind of evolved into what it is behind me, uh, I did both. I had, you know, gaming videos and sport track videos. And it was obvious which one was doing better. Uh, as you guys obviously can tell when I stuck with, uh, the sport track videos were blowing the gaming stuff out of the water. And I don't know if it's because I was necessarily entertaining in games. I know I'm not necessarily an entertaining person to, to watch. People will tell me otherwise. It's probably just my bad self-conscious kicking in. But I don't see myself as primarily entertaining. And I think that was part of why the gaming content never did well. Plus, gaming is a very, very hard scene to break into in YouTube now. Car vlogs, you know, it's there's so many different models of cars out there that it's kind of easy to break in and set your own niche up with a car you own. Uh, I mean, YouTube channels have been built off of Garaband Productions. This stuff with two valves is one of the only video channels, one of the only YouTube channels with two valves for the longest time. Um, Issue Six has a variety that he uses, and I mean that's a, that's the way to go if you're gonna be a car YouTuber. Make sure you have a multiple like a variety. You can have two cars, one from each scene. Like for example, Michael, my friend Kendall Stone, he has a Speed Three and a Charger. Um, he's in a really good position. He's got two cars that are not only loved, but one from each side of the spectrum: a JDM car as well as a USDM car. So I mean it's uh, quite. He's got quite the setup. And I'm gonna bet if he made a comeback to YouTube, he can blow up just just based on the, the fact that he's got that variety. Uh, of course, it's a struggle for me because I only have enough money to support one, um, and it's you know, it's, a, it's a pretty oddball car. But um, anyway, back onto the main topic. Uh, it's all about YouTube, and the gaming videos weren't doing very well. I loved making gaming videos. Don't get me wrong. I did tons of clocks with like Bullet Train HD. There was still a really cool guy that I talked to. I try to talk to pretty good now. Um, we haven't done anything in a while, and sometimes I wonder if people ask about that on his channel because we did used to do tons of stuff together. We did a whole skit um, back in the day on Forza Horizon 3 where he drove a replica of that Eagle Blues 240SX and I drove a Crown Vic that was modeled after an Atlanta police car. And we did this whole like 
kind of funny skit that we did uh, with both cars. Again, I'm not necessarily entertaining, so I doubt, I, I, even more so, I'm not really that funny. Um, but we managed to make this really funny skit, and uh, it didn't necessarily go viral, but that even Blue himself saw it and commented on it. And uh, I talked to him briefly at a cafe in the and he recognized the video, he remembered the video, and um, I told him I was the one who was driving the cop car, and he thought that was kind of cool. So uh, it was a really, it was, you know, there were fun times. I loved making gaming videos, and I still do. And that's where the idea of RT2 came from. It was kind of just a, I want to get back into making gaming videos again. I loved doing it so much, and I just want to bring them back. So that's where RT2 came from. It was kind of just a rebirth of the original JMS1. That's why I was actually called JMS1 for the longest time. I actually, before I named it RT2, it was JMS1 in the exact same spelling and the exact same format that the original was. Uh, and eventually I wound up rebranding it to RT2 just to kind of, um, work as kind of a, the show is kind of like a spinoff of this channel. It's kind of a, you know, what I originally wanted this channel to be, but split up. And uh, I don't expect RT2 to do well. I've said it before, the RT2 is kind of just a passion project. It's something I upload on when I have time. It's something I upload on when I have great ideas for it. It's not like this channel where I focus a lot on getting videos out on a schedule for you guys to see. And that, that can be difficult at times because it's like I don't have a topic all the time for each video. So it's kind of a difficult thing to do. For RG2, it's something I only upload on when I feel like it pretty much. And I don't expect that channel to do well. And uh, like I said, it's just going to be kind of a passion project. I'll upload to every once in a while, make a cool gaming video, post it on there, uh, talk about certain topics. There's a brief stint where I was uploading to both channels pretty consistently. Uh, but I'm not doing that quite as much now. I'll let you guys know. Um, I put way more time into this channel than into RT2, and that's because, again, I put on a, a set schedule here. This channel's got a lot more evolving than that channel does, so I want to keep you guys uh, on the forefront of my uh, priority list. Um, but I do want to make a return to proper gaming video someday, and that's where RT2 came from. But yeah, I mean, that was just kind of an evolution. I get asked that question a lot while I stopped doing gaming content, so I thought it'd be great to kind of just answer it in like a big video about it uh, because it, it, it's been, you know, a few years since I stopped. Uh, and I really, like I said, I really enjoyed making gaming videos. It's just they just never did well. And I feel like that RT2 now with a little bit of better, you know, I'm a little, I've, I've gotten a little bit out of my shell. I used to be very self-conscious and I'm still very self-conscious, but it's very um, shy and, uh, you know, kind of awkward on camera. I still kind of can be. Uh, but I was a lot worse when I was younger, so I've kind of, you know, now I've grown up and broken out of that show, I can definitely, I think I can definitely make better gaming videos now than I could back then, and that's kind of the goal with RT2 is to kind of do just that. Um, especially because I've, get, I've gotten back into playing, you know, games like Forza Hardcore, and I have a whole group of people that I play with every once in a while. Michael plays it now too, so we can of course do videos with Michael in there. I mean, it's just a whole, it's just a perfect storm right now to get back into gaming for me. I just have to get the equipment ready to do it because, um, sure, I have a ton of, I have three computers, but only two of them can run Forza, and only one of them has the power to, to film Forza, and it's the one that isn't strong enough to maintain a solid FPS. So, anyway, that's a bunch of gamer stuff. I'll talk more about that in RT2. Um, I'm probably about to just turn around and immediately film a video for that, sitting in this exact same backdrop, which is my, my garage floor. So uh, anyway guys, I'm going to wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of, it's different from my usual car stuff because uh, this is the car channel. Uh, I don't talk about my gaming past very often, but I thought it would be kind of cool to touch on. Uh, for all those who have watched this channel since, you know, 100, 200 subscribers when I was doing that crap. So anyway guys, I hope you all have a great day. Stay safe out there. Uh, make sure everyone's okay. Do your part. And I'll see you guys on Friday with a brand new video. Take care everyone. Oh. My control arms came in. Expect that coming up possibly on Friday because I think we're installing them tomorrow.